Hello, dear viewers. Welcome to my channel, Science to Technology. In today's show, Future Friday, we're going to talk about zinc bromide gel batteries. So let's dive right into it. Now, first thing you have to understand, why exactly do we need something that's complicated as zinc bromide? Well, reality is we are going full speed in renewable sectors. Renewable energy sources are expanding everywhere. And I mean China, India, Nepal, Pakistan, every Tom, Dick and Harry. So basically everybody is doing it. Now, there is one fundamental limitation and problem with this puppy that is intermittency, meaning this puppy is not reliable, meaning it's not base load capable. So how do we solve it? Because it is a big problem and it's problem so big that it's a problem for everyone. So there is only one fundamental solution to that, that is energy storage. How do you do it? That's up to you, but that's the requirement. Now, at this point in time, there is only one technology that is even close to A, large enough, B, uh, purchasable, meaning you can just call up someone as like, bro, need, and they will be like, yeah, 24 hour Amazon delivery. So in those sort of scenario, lithium ion is there. but reality of it is that it's a too expensive meaning unless you have gg amounts of bank balance it's not something you can touch and even if you have that bank balance it's almost uh, wasting that money because they do not have the lifespan required to like you know return on investment they are like you know we have no other choice so we have to do it and they are unstable meaning if you are talking about like say india or uh, australia when you are using lithium ion you have to have air conditioning unit running on them otherwise the cell temperature could go ludicrously high because outside temperature in our area can easily cross 50 degrees Celsius so you get that point like at that point in time you are losing uh, energy to inefficiency so at that point in time it's much more efficient to just run air condition and be like hey for efficiencies of every single sale let's just and safety also so we have to use cooling system so that adds parasitic losses so overall it's not as amazing as we want it to it's just the only option we have right now on large enough scale so what about this zinc chemistry well zinc metal bromine in zinc uh, bromate solution that's it it's very simple. It's all literally exactly same as uh, basically what you have lead acid battery. Now, what are you doing here? You are what we call doing electroplating. Nothing more, nothing less. It's just a goddamn electroplating solution. You do electroplate it during charging and de-electrify uh, de it during uh, discharging. Now, there are four majority options with this and they are surprisingly simple, meaning the gravity cell option is the simplest. It does not even have membrane, but has the lowest capacity. You can make them in home. Uh, then you have one uh, solid electrolyte, another as a liquid system. Another one, very popular one is like both electrolytes are basically uh, zinc and bromide. Uh, both are as a solution. Now, why would you want to do that? That's the perfect battery that we want to have simply because that's a battery where you're like there are two aspects to it a capacity b power now power is limited by how many reaction uh, reaction surface area you have so if you uh, somebody's like hey we need a lot of power but we don't need that much capacity you will have small tanks but you will have ludicrously large membrane area where you can react them so that's one way of getting boatload of oomph to it basically kilowatt capacity out of it but if somebody's like you do it's for home i don't need that much capacity i barely need let's say five kilowatt out uh, kilowatt but i do need like 30 kilowatt hour capacity at that point in time you'll just increase the tank size now if you're like wait a minute that sounds awesome why we are not doing it a we are doing it b engineering's first rule that shall not have moving components moving components do not last fundamentally and it has a lot of subcomponents meaning pipes valves pumps backup pumps so you get that point like when you're talking about in large scale you unless you are making some huge system you are like you know hundreds of small pump and many of them will break it's almost like why we are switching from hard drive to solid state so it's one of those things that sounds good does work it's everything is awesome but does have a, what we call a bit lower uh, uh, cycling efficiency and it does have much higher parasitic loss because of the requirement of pump and that fundamentally means it's not self-starting once you discharge this meaning you need uh, auxiliary power source to start uh, you know charging them so once it has that enough energy you can uh, you know cycle it on its own but does require auxiliary units to power the pumps then we come to the gel system meaning instead of uh, basically having liquids going uh, electrolytes going through a and b you will just have a gel and a separator. Now that one, what we are talking about here. Now benefit of this puppy is, it's basically uh, flat out, no risk. It's not low risk, it's no risk. Meaning this is the test of that, that is the battery pack and there is a fire. Yes, it's like a full propane fire of around 700 degrees Celsius and nothing matters. It's like this battery is like, I don't care. It fundamentally cannot burn. And if you have a fire or something else, let's say your transformer caught on fire, if the electrolyte content actually spills on it, it will put out the fire. So it's fundamentally, very no 
to low risk meaning uh, if the casing starts to burning if you chip out and use some casing material that is fire uh, you know fire addition then you have issue and toxin also very low very low to negligible so it is one of the amazing aspect from safety point of view meaning it is a very stable puppy another it can be discharged to 100% many time we have build amazing technology for example lithium iron and lithium iron phosphate and lithium titanate and lead acid uh, but all of them are very baby kind of technology even lead acid where you have to, like you have to baby that puppy meaning if once this discharge is dead like especially with car batteries many of you may have experienced i have already experienced this where it's like you know if you discharge this too many times it's like yeah throw it away you can't do anything to it so that is one problem this puppy you can discharge it to 100 percent and leave it there and you can charge it back on it does not care it does not care it's just like i simply don't give a damn so that's awesome but it does have bit lower round trip efficiency much better compared to lead acid but a uh, bit lower than uh, lithium ion lithium ion can easily achieve 90 plus percentage this can touch 70 to 80 percent so there is a significant gap but it does not have moving out compared to that liquid electrolyte system and it does have that dendrite formation issue now be mindful as uh, more i research i do the more i realize the more unless you are using something that is not a metal you will have dendrite formation issue like dendrite is like an aspect of metal itself so that liquid system has to be depleted meaning discharged to 100% uh, you know once in a while basically every three months or four months so to make sure that there is not even single dendrite that's one good thing about it meaning there is a uh, if you are using it as a where you are deep discharging it regularly the cells will last much 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 longer so that's the chemistry aspect of it and if you want detailed video i have provided the detailed videos down below where you can actually see it and better yet you can build it it's surprisingly simple and i have provided a video down below so what about deployment? Because uh, if you are old enough, meaning you have been following all the hypes, you have a glass, uh, glass state lithium battery, this battery, that battery, blah, 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 batteries. And you know for a fact, none of them actually comes to the market. None of them. And that's the reality of it. Like unless you can mass produce it and economically do so, it's meaningless because everything works in lab. Everything works inside a patent. There is a goddamn patent of nuclear fusion jet engine. We don't have nuclear fusion. Somehow Boeing has a patent on nuclear laser jet fusion engine what the hell so it's one of those scenarios where it's like you may think oh patent is hard lab is hard nah nah those are the easiest step hardest step is to make sure you sell it to the public for a profit and that profit is enough to you know grow your company that's the hardest part economics basically so what's the first uh, limit of economics where material supply meaning lithium is something that grew in popularity recently meaning we do not have the technology to like you know mine gigatons of it we are developing those technology now we know how to make gigatons of steel i basically iron why because we know how to we have been doing it for hundreds of years so we are like we got this like we know how to uh, aluminium uh, metal almost all metals we are mass uh, you know producing lithium is something that we are learning to mass produce now so it's not that good however this puppy zinc has been consumed in such a large quantity we already know how to mass produce it so zinc and bromine both of them are super cheap readily available meaning supply chain is not an issue you won't have it like hey we have to go to this company or that company it's like we got this we got this we don't have to worry about it that's first second because of the design and inherent architecture of the system is same as lead acid battery and that's amazing because whether you like it lead acid battery or not you have to understand it's one of the most amazing battery technology we have it has been surviving for 100 years and uh, again it's backbone of many things that you do not think about for example your car starts because of this puppy many of your electrical power substation run on this many of the mobile tower has this battery as a main backup system so it's one of those things that is like you know hidden but it's like backbone level technology so it is amazing technology utilizing that creates another benefit meaning there are hundreds of companies throughout the planet that knows how to manufacture lead acid battery in volume if you're using exact same architecture meaning you just change some electrolyte formation you change some steps in the manufacturing plant let's say there was 20 steps to make from lead, uh, raw materials to lead acid battery you only change two three steps of that and you still have the raw materials final battery in the same factory same floor plan you can do it that's the whole point this is exactly the same meaning it should be very easy to port existing factory and the company uh Jalion is basically working with indian manufacturer to uh, expedite that process where they are like full-scale developer uh, deployment they are doing and what about once it's depleted once our you know uh, liquid is contaminated membrane has been damaged and destroyed th things will happen it's not infinite it will happen so what then Again, because it's exactly like lead acid, undoing it, basically decoupling it is super easy and not to mention it has very low toxicity component compared to lead, which is a very high grade environmental hazard. So uh, decontamination and all that jazz is super expensive and lead acid battery compared to this, super easy. So every aspect of deployment part is super easy. In terms of power, it's not that amazing. 
so we have to understand the comparison aspect of it how does it compare to lithium ion let's be real lithium ion simply bit slap this in terms of kilowatt uh, capacity it can do like I mean, how much oomph it can provide and in terms of kilowatt hour basically how long it can run it will bit slap this puppy and in terms of safety also you may be like lithium titanate you can buy or you can buy lithium iron phosphate both of them has similar safety kind of system so that's not a big deal but here's the deal both of them are more expensive than base lithium ion and base lithium ion is ludicrously expensive so cost is here it's here it's even here the safety one now this puppy is cheaper uh, almost the main target is more or less exactly the same or even cheaper than lead acid battery so this puppy now does mean lead acid would be removed no in terms of basically cranking power this puppy is the king it has surprisingly high amount of cranking power most people have no uh, inherent understanding of like how many amps your car can consume during amp power meaning hundreds of amp is like bruh bruh it's like this puppy is like you can do welding that's how much powerful this batteries are so it does have its uses and it will stay there however uh, when we are talking about zinc bromide system it's very modest in terms of its power in terms of its capacity it's very modest however it has one good advantage long lasting meaning you use this puppy in basically deep cycle battery which i am using for my inverter you buy this three to four years done go home sweet dreams this puppy 15 years that's the difference Lithium ion, same thing, very long. Unless you are using lithium titanium, which does have 10,000 cycle, uh, but be mindful, it is like ludicrously expensive. So, and not to mention, uh, recycling this puppy, good luck. Manufacturing this puppy, good luck. So, it's very modest using the same pipeline you developed for this puppy. It's almost like how biofuel can be integrated in our uh, current infrastructure without changing anything. If you are making biodiesel, you don't have to change not a single thing. Basically, just like control C, control V, don't think too much about it. And it's much safer to use and also end of life. Be mindful, uh, lead acid, because of the, of the higher voltage in water, basically the distilled water you are pouring there, there is a risk of hydrogen dissociation, which does happen. It does, it does have, uh, we have a lot of fires, including in submarine fire, where people have like, yeah, hydrogen has to play, you know, have a place to go. Otherwise, boom happens. And that's why you will notice any IT company that they have like, you know, big uh, house where they have battery and they have like, you know, what we call large uh, on-grid energy, on-grid, I'm saying basically, uh, <clears throat> double conversion UPS or uh, online UPS, they generally have a ventilation there. We learned it the hard way that these are also boom potential. So comparison wise, do not think like this is the latest and greatest, more oomph there. Now it's very modest. It's like, I got this. It's modest, relax, chillax. So it will not replace your starter uh, battery system. It will not touch a lithium ion in mobile system, but everywhere else it will work amazingly. And it does have long life. So what we can expect in the future? This is one thing I have noticed in well throughout the career in my YouTube where it's like people are like, if this is amazing, why don't we use it everywhere? That's not how real life works. Real life is like right tool for the right job. You have a lead acid battery, which is fundamentally different in your inverter battery versus your UPS battery versus your uh, car battery. Even though all of them are lead acid, they are fundamentally different. There is a reason why you have lead acid who are optimized for surface charge. There are lead acid who are optimized for deep cycling. There's a fundamental reason for that. So same thing will happen here. Right tool for the right job. So what is the right job meaning do not think about for mobile applications because at that point you might as well be using lead acid it would be much better so mobile is too weak for that however for stationary power now we are talking every stationary power location where you're utilizing uh, lead acid you can use that now can you scale it up to uh, basically lithium ion where you have megawatt hour capacity yes you can do that for uh, far more cost effectively it will consume a lot more space but you can do it far more effective and because of the ludicrously long lifespan much easier recycling its uh, overall cost of ownership is much much lower so that's the amazing aspect of it and uh, but i do not think that's the best way of utilizing because the own, in, when you are talking about grid scale meaning gigawatt hour capacity the best technology I have seen for that, like especially in gigawatt hour, is A, pumped hydro, we're already using it. B is a cryogenic air storage. It does have a low cycling efficiency, but does have the capacity of like, you know, you can just have 10, 20, or even hundreds of gigawatt hour capacity. So that's that's much more useful in that scale. So rooftop solar is this wise, uh, like, you know, main, main breeding ground, basically. If rooftop solar is uh, you mixed with this, then we are talking about an energy revolution. Because you have to understand, like, for example, Australia, they have an assessment that at this point in time, there are 2 million households that have solar. That's good. Again, not good for India's point of view because we have billion of population. Australia is very small in terms of population. So in those sort of scenario, they are like, okay, we have 2 million people. How many people have battery backup? 
surprisingly small, meaning 50,000 kind of small. So they realized it like, unless we have something that is more or less same cost as a uh, lead acid, but does not have the drawback of lead acid, meaning uh, basically a ludicrously heavy, toxic, meaning uh, the fumes that come out of it and you know, the acidic smell is not good. So those things are an issue. On top of that, uh, you know, cycle, recycling it is a hazard, hassle also all that and not to mention small lifespan you really do not want to buy this sort of thing and be like you know what uh 10 year let's throw it all away it's very very expensive. or even if you don't throw it away your capacity will go tick, 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 lower and lower and lower and lower 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 so that's one of those things and i i'm dealing with a lot of lead acid batteries so i know that feeling but in those sort of scenarios this battery will is perfect replacement a much is more or less the same thing looks uh, like a quacks like a lead acid battery and you just like put it there and forget about it that's the whole point you forget about it compared to like 500 cycles of a uh, lead acid battery you're talking about 2500 cycles of lead, uh, you know the system zinc system that's the whole point meaning you put it you forget about it that's the amazing scale of it meaning from few kilowatts to almost one megawatt that's the amazing sweet spot for it so that's what i'm expecting in the future let's say only time will tell what exactly happens so this was my presentation on zinc uh, bromide battery hopefully you have liked it learned from it in that case please click the like button share it amongst your friend that will help me a lot if you didn't like it didn't enjoy it i urge you to press dislike press it twice to show me extra disappointment please leave a comment because i do try to reply to all of them subscribe press the bell icon if you're free and as always thanks for watching